Sometimes we need some data to be initialized when a servlet is created. To do this, we can use servlet initialization parameters. In this video, you're going to learn how to set servlet initialization parameters and how to get the servlet initialization parameters in order to use their values. Here we see an empty dynamic web project in Eclipse. The name of the project is currently called Servlet Initialization Demo. There is one index file. This is to start the project when we want to run it. We can see that pretty much there's just a link to get a servlet starting. We're going to create that servlet in just a moment. And we have one package in our source called Demos. This is just a placeholder for where I can put my servlet when I create it. The goal here is to set up some initialization parameters for a servlet and see how we might see those or work with those on the client side. To do this, we have to start by creating the servlet. So right-click on the Demos package, select New, and find Servlet. Here we see the Create Servlet dialog. We'll call our servlet init param servlet. We'll leave the other things to their default values. Select Next. On this page of the Create Servlet dialog, we can do several things. We can adjust the name if we want. We can write a description. Simple servlet initialization demo. And we've seen before where we can set the URL mappings. The URL mapping is what we would need to use as a hyperlink or the action of a form in order to get the servlet running. In the middle of this form, we notice there's a place to set initialization parameters. We're going to set one here as an example. We'll see how to set another one later outside of this dialog. Select Add. Let's create a simple one. We'll call it MSG for message. This is the name of the variable or the parameter. And we'll provide a simple string message. Hello there. Just a simple initial method. After we fill out the form, press OK, and we can see that that's listed. If we wanted to add other initialization parameters, we would simply hit Add, or we could select one if we need to change it and hit Edit or Remove. Often we'll start stop here and hit Finish, but in this case we need to set one more thing before we can use initialization parameters. So now select Next, we don't often visit this page in our Create Servlet dialog because we usually want to just accept the default methods that are selected here. However, as we will see, initialization parameters will be stored in our deployment descriptor. We need some way to get those out and read those when the servlet is created. You might think we would read initialization parameters in the constructor, but it turns out that the object that we're going to need is not available when the constructor is running. So we need to use the next method that will run after a constructor. And this would be the init method. Init is short for initialization. So make sure that init is selected. Also make sure that do get and do post are selected as usual. And hit finish. Here we see our servlet has been created. It's in the package demos, imports the appropriate Java classes, and extends HTTP servlet. It includes our do get and our do post, but it also now includes a method called init. And you'll notice it includes in it as a parameter an object called the servlet config. This object will have several methods that can be used to work with initialization parameters. Before we work with our init param servlet, let's visit the deployment descriptor to see what has happened when we created our servlet. In the web.xml file, we see the welcome file list. This is the usual default values in here. I'm going to clean this up a little bit, get rid of all of those except the one I am using. In this example, I'm using index.html. We see that the servlet mapping maps init param servlet to a servlet of the same name, and the servlet is connected to the Java class of the same name in the demos package. We also see the description that we gave. We see one additional thing in our servlet portion of the web.xml, and this is the tag init param. Here we see the description, and we see the parameter name and its value. So you see that when we've added that to the dialog, it automatically included it in WebXML. This is nice because 
if we want to add additional initialization parameters that we might have forgot about when creating a servlet, we can come here and add them simply by putting a, a similar construct within the web XML. Let's do that. I'm going to copy, just so I don't have to retype the tags, everything from init parameter down to the closing tag. Let's change the description to another simple initial. These should say parameter. Notice we can also edit things that were developed. This time let's create something that we intend to be a number parameter. So let's just call it num, short for number, and give it a value about 42. A seminal number in computing and science fiction. So for our servlet, init param servlet, at this point we have two initialization parameters. The message, which is going to be intended to be a string, just says hello there, and num, which we're going to intend to be an integer when we use it, and we give it the value of 42. As with many parameters, though, we'll see that this is a string to begin with, so we'll have to do appropriate conversion in order to use that as an integer. Now back to our servlet. While the initialization parameters are included within our web XML, we have nothing in our code that will actually read or allow them to be used. So we're going to do two things. First, we're going to add two fields to our servlet class. As usual, we'll put our fields right after the class statement. Let's create a string field called message to hold the message once we read that, and we'll initialize it to be blank. Let's create a simple int to hold the num, and we'll set it to zero initially. So we have two fields. Because they're fields, they can be used in any of the methods below. The next task is to actually read the initialization parameters when the servlet is created. Again, you might think that this would go in the constructor, but since we need to use a servlet config object to get these values, we can't do that in the constructor because the servlet config is not available until after the object has been constructed. So we need to do that in the next best thing, which is init. In the lifetime of a servlet, the init is a method that will automatically run right after the servlet object has been created using the constructor. In addition, the servlet init has automatically been created to use the servlet config object. So let's read the message. We're going to want to set our field variable message equal to whatever the initialization parameter is for the servlet. Type config dot. We do not have to redeclare config as it's declared within the attribute list of the init method. You'll notice that there is at least first get init parameter and takes the string as an argument. Also, you might look through, and there is also one called get init parameter names, so we can actually get a list of all the names of the inits. And then there are several other methods we can use from the config, such as the get servlet name. Get init parameter will be the method of choice here, so let's select that. Then for the argument, we're going to simply put message to provide the label for the value that we want. To summarize, this will use the config object, use the get init parameter method, so it reads from the des deployment descriptor the init parameter that has the name msg, and it will get its value. Recall that that's hello there from our web XML. And then it will store that value in the field that we have created with the same name msg. Let's get our other value. That would be this dot num for the number. We'll do a very similar line to get that, config dot get init parameter, and you'll call the name of this one, or the label put on it in the web XML, is also num, semicolon. Pretty much the same thing, but you notice this time we have an error. And the error reads, type mismatch, cannot convert from string to int. In this line we had no problem because the get init parameter always returns a string, as we can see at this description from the Java API. And since we were storing that in a string variable, there was no problem, no type mismatch. This time, we're getting a value, which is a string, but we want to store it as an int. So we need to do something to convert it. As you might have seen before, especially when we, we were reading parameters off the request object, one possible way to convert 
a string that can be converted to an integer is to use integer dot parse int. And then the argument for parse int takes a string, which is okay because the result of the get init parameter is a string. So to summarize this line, we get the value for the variable labeled num. We read that it's 42, but its data type is currently a string. So then we take that and we convert it to an integer with parse int, and then finally we'll assign it to the variable this.num. So thus far, we have set our initialization parameters within the web.xml, either when we created the servlet or later when we added one to web.xml. And now, within the init method of our servlet, we have retrieved our values. So it's just a matter of actually using those field variables when we need that. Here we are back at our servlet, and rather than bore you with some extra typing, I've added some code. In the doGet method, I simply passed execution on to do post. And in the do post method, I've simply created a print writer object to send output to the response. Notice I still need to import my print writer. And then I've just simply created some output so we can see the results printed back to our client. Just added some strings that would be printed out showing what the value of our initialization parameters are. Just to simply show you that we can get and actually use the values from the initialization parameters used in the web XML. Let's save this and run our servlet initialization demo. Right click, run as run on server, next, and finish. Here we see our index.html page with our start hyperlink. We'll click on the hyperlink. We should go to our servlet and we should just simply see the results of our initialization parameters printed out. As we do, hello there, the number is 42. So in this video, you have learned how to set servlet initialization parameters within the web.xml file, and you have learned how to get the servlet initialization parameters using the init method of the servlet, and then working with those and various other methods. This has been a Piercy production.